So, famine. There's a famine upon us. And uh, all these food processing plants are just mysteriously going up in flames. And uh, everybody's wondering why. Why are they all burning to the ground? Um, and, of course, uh, people are, you know, all the quote-unquote fact-checkers are quick to say, oh, no, it's nothing serious. Um, you know, uh, no, don't worry. It's not because we're trying to starve you. You know, like they're actually saying things like that. It's like, methinks thee dost protest too much, you know, as it says in Shakespeare. Um, you know, there, there's a 95 uh, list. A 90, uh, there have been like 97 plants, basically, that have gone up since the beginning of the year. And 97 food processing plants. Uh, I'm sorry, 87 since the beginning of the year, 97 total. Let me, let me show you the, um, the list here. Um, and that's, that's just to show you that 1 through 10, that's from last year, 1 through 10. And then 11, this one's a little clearer, 11 through 97 are all from this year. All These are all food processing plants that have been destroyed this year. 97 different plants, well, 87, I guess, if you start from January. Um, I guess the other one you could start it from the beginning of the Jewish year. But, uh, but in any case, that's a lot of food plants, okay? Over 2 million turkeys have been destroyed. Over 40 million chickens have been destroyed. You know, we know about like 3,000 cows have been destroyed. And the farmers can't afford um, to even grow the food uh, on the farms because of the cost of fertilizer going on. And, uh, and then they can't afford to harvest it because the gas prices have gone up so much. So the diesel prices are so high, it's like $5 a gallon for diesel, so they can't even afford to go out in the fields and get the crop out because it costs so much, it's just not cost effective for them to even even harvest it. And so the farmers are having a, a really hard problem here and you know they can't even get the food out off, off the land. So food shortages, record price, diesel prices could lead to food shortages uh, in the U.S., farmers warn. So we know we knew this was coming. We know this is coming. And, uh, and so now, not only do they have to contend with the, with the prices, but now you've got diesel thieves. So diesel has become so valuable, you actually have thieves who are stealing the diesel from the farmers. So uh, in, in Craighead County, thieves steal over $11,000 worth of diesel from the farmers on Monday. So it's hard enough that they're trying to harvest the crops, but they can't even get the gas to do it. And um, let me let me let me see what else I had written down here about that. Another page here. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's interesting to think like you know that people keep inventing a car that runs on agua. OK, um, several people have done this and they've been mysteriously disappeared every time someone tries to invent this thing. It's because it's very simple. When you think about it, they had steam engines back before they had gasoline engines. Right. So it's not complicated to think, oh, yes, well, you could run it on water, on hydrogen power. And, uh, and then the only thing only runoff from it is actual water. And so a lot of people have invented this and they keep disappearing. And recently, one was just happened to be part of one of the, the mass shootings. One of them got killed, one of the guys who invented a car that runs on agua. And uh, uh, that's in America, right? Because in America, they keep killing these people off. But in Slovakia, they've actually managed to come out with a water-powered supercar. Notice they try to keep these in the, the, the expensive range, right? They keep making cheap versions of it, but they kill those people off. Um, but uh, they make expensive electric cars and expensive uh, water cars. But they've had this for technology for a long time. They had electric cars for a long time. I mean, long before you know, Musk and his Tesla company came along, they had electric cars. It goes back to the 50s. Um, and they, they had them, I think, in the 80s or 90s, and then they kind of took them all back from people because you know, they're trying to keep their oil embargo going. Um, but obviously, things are falling apart. There, so, so so farmers may need to switch to a water power or something, some other alternative. Also, of course, we've got baby formula. Baby formula is disappearing from the world. Um, and uh, thanks to Katie's uh, country, 
Uh, 85,000 tins of baby formula arrive in Ohio from Australia. So we, we're relying on other countries to provide us with baby formula. We're importing it from Australia, from Mexico, and um, we've got people looking for it forever. And now parents are actually turning to the black market to get their baby formula. So they're actually trying to get it from uh, nefarious in nefarious ways. And who knows what's in that? I mean, we know that the baby formula in China had like, I forget what they, there was some kind of uh, paint thinner or something they were putting in there in the Chinese to do. So who knows what you're going to get when you're buying it on the black market. So people are being uh, killed off. So, um, but guess who's getting formula? Those who are coming into the country illegally, they're getting all the formula they need. So I think the solution is just leave the country, pretend you're a foreign immigrant, uh, and come into the country, and then you'll get some formula. I, I guess that's that's what they're telling us we have to do. So um, that's kind of interesting. But, um, uh, you know, that ties into Revelation chapter 7, because in Revelation 7, it talks about, uh, let, me, let me show you that real quick. Uh, the, oh, actually, Revelation 6, let me go over here. Um, in Revelation 6, it talks about the fact that uh, the third seal is going to be a famine. And and I'm going to get into this tonight as we talk about the tribulation a little bit. Um, but the third seal, it says, uh, let's see. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come, I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, Two pounds of wheat for a day's wage and six pounds of barley for a day's wage. And do not damage the oil and the wine. Now, oil, we're assuming they mean uh, edible oil, although, you know, with, in today's world, it could mean uh, the opposite, because obviously we're seeing that problem with the oil. Uh, oil is uh, in, in high demand uh, with gasoline and diesel and everything else, so, or petrol, uh, depending on where you are and what you call it. But um, so that's actually happening now. We've got the famine in front of us, it's coming to pass. And so, um, you know, they said, what was it, you know, four weeks ago that they said in 10, in 10 weeks we'll be out of food. So I think we're, we're, we're quickly approaching that time by fall. You know, we're going to be in a real dire strait and looking at some real, uh, real struggles and real problems there. So 